Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Can you guys hear me over there, wherever you are? Uh, okay, so how many people are we? We're 30, which is not bad at all. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Samah Abdel Jalil. I am an assistant professor in the English department. Um, and uh, I happen to be your uh, course uh, tutor. Uh, it's A230B. Uh, and um, uh, this is, of course, summer. Let me share the... Uh, um, I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me well. If you can hear me... Uh, if it's loud and clear over there, please type one or say yes. So obviously you can hear me very well, which is good news. Let me share my cam with you also, like I did with the other uh, people. Okay. Okay. So can you see me now? Okay, good. Uh, can you recognize me? Have you seen uh, Have you seen me on TV before? <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I, I think I know some of you guys. Um, some some of you have been uh, my uh, students for quite some time. I can recognize Amr because we don't have so many Amrs around. So, uh, I guess this is the Amr that I know. I, I also have. I don't know, uh, perhaps we have, uh, uh, do we have other people from Jeddah, people that I know um, and I have to at one point? Uh, okay, so we have people from Riyadh and we have people from Jeddah and uh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, somebody is saying that she cannot hear me. Uh, uh, Sara, if if you're the only one who cannot hear me, your advice to go out and come back because uh, obviously everybody else can hear me. Can you can you type this to her? If somebody cannot hear me properly and other people can, it means that the problem is on their end. Uh, uh, again, Ahmed, uh, let me ask you this question: Can you hear me all? Can you hear me? Uh, everyone can hear me, so it's except uh, uh, except for Ahmed and somebody else, right? Ahmed and uh, this somebody else, I would like you to go out and come back. Uh, of course, if they cannot hear me, <laughs> the, they will be able to uh, kind of go out. Uh, ask them, can you type to them? Ask them to go out and come back. Uh, perhaps th that, that would solve the, uh, the issue or the problem that they uh, may have. Uh, okay, bye. Um, so it's A, A, A to 30 B. Uh, um, I'm assuming that you have done uh, A to 30 A very recently. You you haven't. You're not, for example, uh, postponing your courses and uh, uh, because uh, somehow the two courses are related, uh, w w which is obviously typical of A's and B's. Whenever you have uh, a B course, it's normally a continuation of the efforts. Uh, started in A. If, uh, I assume, I mean, you have done your exams uh, um, a few days ago, you have um, gotten your uh, marks released and everything. For I don't believe that, uh, I mean, you still have the ideas fresh in your minds because sometimes, uh, and this is typical of literature, people kind of uh, cross reference. We can be talking about something from B and we refer back to something from A in order to make things uh, even clearer. Um, again, let me let me ha let me uh, address this issue. Uh, Kamar is saying if you can't hear the doctor, he is suggesting that you go out and try again. That's correct. Those who cannot hear the doctor, please try to look in again. No guys who cannot. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, so Sara um, did just that, and she is, alhamdulillah, she can hear us uh, very well now, okay? Um, so what is it that we have on the agenda tonight? And then obviously it's almost uh, uh, night here in Jeddah, it's 6.10. Um, so what is it that we have? Uh, I'm going to introduce you to the course, 
and uh, what do I mean by introducing you to the course I'm going to share the course calendar with you uh, I'll talk about the different uh, um, you know genres that we're going to be uh, talking about and addressing I'm going to talk about the uh, whether we are having novels or uh, short stories or novellas uh, we'll talk about all uh, of that uh, very briefly and then we'll proceed to the items that we have on tonight's agenda uh, I mean the agenda is obviously very uh, generous and very big and this is something that I need to warn you against right from the very beginning we only have seven or eight weeks um, and this and and the effort should uh, is tremendous I mean given the fact that we have so many uh, um, items on the agenda in terms of works, uh, literary works that we have to handle. Uh, um, suffice it to say that we have a very bulky novel uh, um, at the very start which is Wuthering Heights and Wuthering Heights is very bulky and by bulky I mean it's very long. Um, okay, uh, so we have a novel, we have a novella uh, um, and we have um, you know something in the middle uh, yeah uh, Nermin is saying that this that, I mean um, um, I am very clear to her so El uh, Ustaz if you have a problem please uh, go out and come back uh, anyway um, this is kind of I don't want to um, you know um, we don't want to uh, we don't want it to be disruptive uh, um, disruptive in the sense that people may get my attention uh, um, diverted uh, from uh, what I am saying by writing uh, um, stuff that uh, um, I, 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 I cannot help with when you talk about uh, sound I mean try your best first and then ask me okay so when it comes uh, to whether you can hear me or not um, uh, we need it to run smooth because uh, like I said uh, it's very uh, heavy-handed what we're going to talk about uh, over the space of uh, seven or eight weeks it's, it's a lot of stuff so we need to have our uh, attention undivided uh, more or less uh, <coughs> okay so um, any any ideas about what we're in for? Have you done your research? Have you done your homework? I mean, in terms of uh, reading about the course, uh, perhaps uh, getting in contact with other people who have done the course and they can share their experience uh, with you. Have you done any of that? Uh, are you aware of what you're in for? So Nermin, for example, Nermin, we have Nermin and she's saying yes, and Sarah is also uh, saying a little, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready to hear what you guys have to say about that. By the way, we have the mic facility. If you think you're ready to talk, no problem. I can always enable uh, the mic and you can talk. And, and instead of uh, you know, all the time typing, you can have the freedom of uh, talking. Just let me know by raising your hand and I can allow you uh, to talk. Uh, we need to diversify the way we do stuff here, okay? Sometimes you type, sometimes you speak, okay? Um, I mean, in order to kind of uh, yeah, avoid monotony and uh, uh, and feeling bored in class. I don't want you to feel bored because once you feel bored, you uh, switch off and you lose interest and the next thing you know is that you're not uh, paying enough attention. Uh, okay. So again, I was talking about um, the course and how much you know about it. Uh, perhaps uh, you didn't have enough time to do that, to do research. I mean, the transition between uh, the final exam in uh, um, A230A and the new course is obviously uh, very short. But I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't. Uh, uh, blame you if you haven't done this kind of research, which which, which is fine. No? Uh, we're just uh, trying to get to know you more in terms of uh, yeah, see how diligent you are, uh, how hardworking, and how curious you are. Sometimes curiosity can uh, do the trick. Uh, people can read out of curiosity. People can get to know uh, about 
stuff out of curiosity once you lose cu curiosity lots of uh, things never hap happens in or happen in the world um, Nermin said I asked and they said it's very close from cl close to part one uh, th this is partly true because like I said uh, it's more or less like a continuation uh, if you still remember the last thing you did in uh, um, A to 30A was uh, doing uh, I think it was uh, Hoffman you, you guys did you did Hoffman um, uh, you were in the 19th century or the early 19th uh, century uh, already right um, <coughs> you did uh, poetry uh, poetry from the romantics right so you know about the age and what used to happen um, okay so what uh, the, the the writers that we're going to talk about are also sharing the period with the romantics and people who came uh, yani before them uh, uh, except for the fact that they they the, the 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 time period that that we're going to talk about is more expanded and is longer we're talking about uh, uh, what came to be known as the victorian age we're going to talk about the victorian age uh, by the way uh, I think I made a mistake. I need to uh, uh, kind of record this class. Um, so I have to say record and I, ha I have to, s to write Samah and here A to 30 B uh, class number one. Okay. Okay, uh, guys, uh, let me just uh, alert you to the fact that we're being recorded. Um, again, uh, this is A to 30B, um, and uh, we have a lot of stuff on the agenda. We're going to start with the calendar, like I said, and then we make the transition to the chapters that we have uh, today or tonight. Uh, okay. Uh, Kamar is saying, I think the literary pieces of the 20th century is a bit more experimental than the texts in uh, part uh, A. Um, yeah, this is true, but we don't have so many examples of the 20th century. Actually, most of the stuff that we're dealing with, except for, uh, of course, uh, 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 Lyonisa, this... Uh, um, uh, Irish uh, uh, play that we have, except for that, the other uh, I mean works are all uh, rooted in the Victorian age in the uh, middle and late 19th century. So w we don't have a great deal of experimentation unless we talk about uh, Brian Friel, uh, who is another uh, or a totally different story, as you you're going to uh, notice here, yeah, Amar, as we proceed. Uh, um, okay, so let me uh, start by first of all sharing my screen with you. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and sharing the course calendar. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the course calendar, if you can see it. I would like you to confirm that you guys can see the course calendar. Ah, yes. Okay. So this is a uh, summer, of course. Uh, this is the summer course calendar and typical of uh, summer uh, semesters. So you don't have as many weeks as you are uh, um, used to in, um, in regular uh, semesters, whether we're talking about uh, spring or fall. Uh, okay. So um, what happens? You normally have eight weeks in summer and you have the same material that is uh, that has been taught in uh, spring or or, or in winter uh, and the simple reason would be that instead of having one class like you do in regular uh, semesters you have uh, two classes we meet twice uh, um, in summer as you may know so i am meeting you today and uh, we, 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 i think we have another class on Thursday, uh, if I'm not mistaken, of course. Um, okay, so seven or eight weeks, and uh, over those seven 
or eight weeks we're going to cover um, lots of grounds uh, okay so if we go uh, week by week in week one as you can see on the screen uh, you have introduction to part two um, yeah because uh, I mean the book is obviously divided into two parts you have done part one uh, and and a to 30 a and we uh, we are doing part uh, two in a to 30 b and the the name of the book is romantics um, and victorians of course um, and, and of course you have the book if you're doing b if you have the book um, okay so you don't have the problem that a to 30 a um, are having the fact that they don't uh, it's the, it's an a course and they should have the material handy with them uh, anyway so the book that we're using um, in the first uh, part of this uh, course would be uh, romantics and victorians uh, we're, we're already done with the romantics as I said in, in, in section A uh, uh, okay the name of the big the, the book is uh, romantics and victorians uh, ya arwa uh, okay, so uh, we will uh, today it's going to be uh, introduction and introduction to part two of the book. Uh, don't ask me about colors, okay? Uh, let just focus with me on what I'm saying, and then we can always talk about what color the book is, and what it has, and what it it, it doesn't, okay? Right. Um, okay, so uh, in week one, uh, which is today. Uh, which is this hour and the next uh, we will have um, or we should have an introduction to part two where the introduction is titled home and approved in the Victorian age and this is as I said is taken from uh, uh, book two romantics and Victorians um, when we're done with that uh, hopefully tonight we'll move to uh, chapter five uh, in the second uh, uh, book Romantics and Victorians, and we're going to do uh, Weathering Heights. Weathering Heights is, of course, a novel. It's a bulky one, and it's by Emily Bronte. Uh, Emily Bronte may be uh, familiar to some of you if uh, she is sis uh, the sister of Charlotte Bronte and other. Uh, I mean, the Bronte family is all over the place. It's very, yeah, and they are very famous. Uh, all of them are, mashallah, very talented. All were, obviously, they were all very talented and they wrote uh, yeah, poetry and novels okay so what is it that we're going to do with Emily Pronte she has a very famous uh, novel by the name of Weathering Heights and we're doing Weathering Heights um, okay so this is uh, happens to be chapter 5 um, Weathering Heights by Emily Pronte uh, and this chapter is called at home we'll talk about at home um, and we, we'll see what at home, the phrase at home means, because there is obviously more to at home than just uh, houses and, uh, you know, internal affairs. We'll, we'll talk more about that when the time is right. Uh, and then uh, I, I think we're, we're going to conclude tonight by talking about, uh, by addressing chapter five, hopefully. Uh, and then in week two, which happens to be next week, we're going to do uh, chapter six. And it's again, Emily Pronte. And it's again Weathering Heights, uh, but this time, or that, uh, when we come to this point, we'll talk about uh, the approved uh, uh, part of the chapter. So, uh, chapter five is about whom, while chapter six is about approved. We'll we'll try to unpack uh, these concepts because uh, I mean, like I said, home is a concept in and uh, and of itself, and uh, also uh, approved is a concept that has a lot of. Uh, ideas uh, to it. We'll talk about that. Uh, okay, and then within and the same week, which is uh, next week, we'll also have uh, chapter seven. And with chapter seven, we're going to move away from Emily uh, Pronte's Weathering Heights, and we'll have another novel, small small as it is, and it's called The Sign of Four. And it's written. Uh, it was written by Arthur uh, Conan Doyle, and of course, you guys know who Arthur uh, Conan Doyle. He is very famous for his detective novels and short stories, right? And some of his characters are very 
uh, popular, right? One of them happens to be uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, and everybody knows who Sherlock Holmes is. Uh, um, so he has a repertoire of, of tools when it comes to writing detective novels and stories, as we're going to see. Uh, so what we have uh, for Arthur Conan Doyle, we have the sign of four. Uh, a sign of four. The sign of four is also a detective um, um, novel, and it's. Uh, uh, I mean, there is obviously a movement between England and India. We'll talk about India. This is uh, perhaps uh, why we were having uh, concepts like abroad, because the novels are. Uh, we have this uh, permanent movement from one place to another and this place can be as small as a house and it can be as big as a country. You're moving uh, from one country to another. Um, uh, in week two, hopefully, we'll, we'll finish with uh, Arthur uh, Conan uh, Doyle. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, things in week two, so hopefully we can uh, finish with that. Uh, and then we move uh, to uh, week three, and it's going to be chapter eight. And in chapter eight, we're going to have R Robert uh, Lewis Stevenson, uh, another famous uh, 19th century uh, British writer and a novelist. And we're, we're going to have a small novella or a novella um, called the, the Beach of Felicia. There is a great deal of argument <laughs> over whether uh, we're pronouncing the word Felicia uh, the right way. To, and it can be Felicia, it can be Felicia. I, I did my homework, and by the way, and this was way back when I started the course. But uh, I don't, I, I haven't seen two people agree on the pronunciation of the word Felicia. So that's why you shouldn't be, uh, I mean, excuse my Felicia thing. <laughs> so it's, uh, so the, it's the, the Beach of Felicia. Um, and it's, um, you know, uh, like I said, it's a small novel or novella, and it's part of a collection of, uh, uh, you know, um, um, you know, novels or short stories that he wrote, uh, and he titled them South, uh, South, South Sea Tales. And uh, as you can see, we're talking about the South Sea, we're talking about the uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, where uh, um, in late 19th century England, uh, people started to uh, like go there and explore uh, places over there. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll see why Stevenson went over there and whether he liked it there, whether he stayed there or not, and what is it that the, the novels that he wrote uh, in these places, what is it that he wants to communicate if the setting is uh, uh, places like these. Um, what else do we have? Um, I mean, week three marks the end of, uh, obviously, uh, the book, the, the second book, and then we move to another book, and the title of the book, uh, and this is book three, it's the 20th century. Uh, and with the 20th century, we're going to have two very famous Irish uh, uh, writers. One of them is uh, James Joyce. James Joyce is very famous. Uh, he is an Irish novelist, um, and he is one of the uh, the pillars, uh, if you like, the pillars of uh, modernity. We'll talk about modernity and what it means when the time is right. He is a modernist writer, and there is obviously a difference between modern and modernist. When I when I when I use the uh, uh, the ist, I mean the the suffix uh, ist. I mean. Uh, I'm referring to uh, techniques uh, that the writer is using. So he is a modern and a modernist writer, as you are going to see. So what is it that we're going to do with him? He has a collection of short stories by the name of Dupliners. And obviously, Dupliners are the dwellers and uh, those who live in Dublin. And Dublin happens to be the capital of Ireland. Uh, he is talking about Dublin, obviously. Uh, he's talking about their manners and how they changed over the years. He talks about issues that uh, uh, I mean, the Irish society was grappling with uh, uh, at the time. Um, so uh, it's a collection of short stories, and we're going to uh, pick and choose. Uh, we have a plan to 
uh, uh, talk about some of them. And one, one, uh, w uh, and the biggest happens to be uh, uh, a short story uh, by uh, the name uh, of uh, the Duplins, Duplin. Um, the dead the dead is the biggest one uh, and it's very interesting and engaging as you're going to see uh when we're done with uh joyce we're going to move on to uh, a colleague of his uh, his countryman uh, uh, i'm not sure uh, because uh, you know ireland if you look at the geography of ireland you have northern ireland and you also have the other part of ireland uh for brian Frile is another irish <coughs> and he um uh, this is obviously a play not uh, a collection of short stories uh, and the play that we have is dancing as lunaza i'm hopeful that i'm, I'm also pronouncing lunaza uh, correctly because uh, this is irish you know irish people have their own language and they are making it uh, their business that people speak their language they are so proud of the language that they want to uh, kind of read, uh, get rid of English and have their own uh, language replacing it. Uh, whether they are successful or not, this is the subject of another day, obviously. Uh, okay, so we have Brian Fra uh, Frail and uh, uh, his dancing at Lunasa. It's a, a memory play, as you're going to discover when we, um, yeah, when, when we reach this point. Uh, this was um, very briefly what we are in for. What we are in for is sweet and nice, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy every bit of it as much as I, uh, I, I have been enjoying it all through. I've been teaching the course for quite some time, and I promise you uh, it's going to be a very engaging and a very interesting uh, learning experience. Uh, before I proceed to the, uh, to, the, to the course proper, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm ready to uh, kind of hear them. Uh, questions? You can use the mic, by the way. <coughs> uh, okay, this is interesting. Sheikha is asking about the uh, team, TMA, and it's good. Uh, that she has um, raised this issue. Um, unlike last semester where you had, um, you know, um, yeah, I mean, uh, some of us have, uh, I mean, uh, obviously we finished uh, before Corona and we did, we did quiz, quizzes one and two, right? But uh, instead of having them out of 20, we had them uh, out of 80. But this is not happening uh, anymore. Uh, this time around, the um there is a different pre uh, mark breakdown where you have a tma to total mark the assignment and this is going to be out of 50 and then you go to the final uh, which is uh, out of another 50. if i think this is uh any more fair i mean if you ask me uh let me finish what uh, I am talking about, and then we move to something else. Uh, this is a gamma disruptive. If I am in uh, in the middle of a speech, if I'm talking about something, don't ask me another question because I cannot help but look at what you're uh, typing. And this is very disruptive because it disrupts my line of thought. Let me finish first, and then we go uh, and talk about the grades, like uh, Layla is asking it about the grades, Ahmad is asking about attendance, and I am talking about what uh, Sheikh has raised uh, about the exams. But let's be focused. Let's not be disruptive in the interest of a very interesting learning experience. Uh, again, uh, I'm not done with what uh, um, I was saying about the assessments, uh, how we're going to evaluate you. And I said that's 100 marks that you guys have, and those 100 marks are divided over to assessments uh, one is called tma tutor marked assignment we're going to post very soon we're going to post the tma uh, um, and then you uh, will ask you to go and download it have it completed and then upload it uh, on the lms again you're familiar with that uh, this is no new okay and then we go to the final and the final is going to be uh, 
until this point it's, it's going to be a, a take home exam um, where you also uh, go to the LMS and download uh, the the exam and have it completed within uh, um, you know um, any set time and then you upload it again uh, according to the submission uh, schedule and then that would be it okay <coughs> so by by talking about assessments i think i covered the idea of grades right 100 marks to uh, assignments uh, 50 each um, of course if you um, uh, the tmas and the finals are uh, supposed to be written in an essay format uh, otherwise is not accepted like you have seen I think you have tested us enough and you know what uh, you uh, uh, came out with I mean if you're not writing properly if you're not writing within uh, um, uh, the standards and the standards um, you know have more or less to do with writing a research uh, paper that is not plagiarized that is uh, written within the framework of uh, the essay conventions. If you're doing that, uh, that's fine. If you're not doing that, so you need to revisit how you do stuff. Uh, Kamar is asking uh, Samah, what about uh, last semester grades? What about them? Uh, are they not out yet? And this is what you're trying to imply, uh, Kamar. You guys haven't seen your marks yet. They are not released yet. <coughs> so, okay they are not out yet which is uh yeah um, i'll tell you why because i mean we're an international university like you know and we have different branches um saudi arabia's final exams were early uh, the other branches are um you know they are doing their exams as we speak Okay, and of course we have external examiners from uh, the Open University in England and they have to kind of check our marks and I um, mean this is kind of um, um, uh, a part of the uh, quality um, I mean assurance process that we normally conduct. So um, um, you normally have uh, I mean I mean the grades um, are all out or should be out together I mean you cannot have Saudi Arabia I mean at, I mean you know about your, you know whether you have passed or failed in order to kind of register for the sum as for the grades you have to wait for the other uh, students from uh, the other branches to finish so that uh, um, I mean the grades all the grades can get indoors and get accepted uh, in one go okay so this is the reason perhaps why uh, we're not having them revealed until this moment but you have to um, kind of exercise some patience uh, okay but uh, you, you already know uh, I think um, I, w I was told that you guys were given uh, like letter grades but you can make the calculation and you can translate the grades into um, you know marks right don't you have that you have letter grades yet um, um, so I was misinformed some people told me that we uh, that they had the, the letter grades already so perhaps um, uh, okay so like I said uh, I'll ask you to kind of wait and uh, they will uh, come out uh, soon enough inshallah anyway uh, back to uh, what I was talking about um, I don't even remember I, I was asking you questions I was asking if you have questions before we proceed to the uh, to the course proper and it was all about grades and assignments and assessments and now you know all uh, about that so we'll uh, proceed uh, to the course and we'll proceed to the items that we have uh, tonight um, again we're uh, so let's go to the course calendar and see what we have on the menu we have introduction to part two and it's home and approved in the victorian age uh, so again we'll we'll talk about them in an introduction home and approved and then we start
talking about them in details I mean the idea of whom is going to take a whole chapter and then we move on to a prod which is going to take another uh, chapter uh, okay so home and a prod in the Victorian age and this is again taken from book two romantics and Victorians let me um, close this and then start something else let me go to the introduction okay so can you see that you can what is it that you can see um, what kind of file do you have is it um, wait is it a PDF file yeah absolutely yes it's very strange that it doesn't open here okay okay can you still see me or is it hiding me okay good so let me check how I can use that from here wait 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 okay no not this one okay So part two, home and approved in the Victorian age. Okay, let's start with unpacking uh, the um, <coughs> the title of the chapter and see what it is all about. So home and approved in the Victorian age. So um, the Victorian age. What do I mean by the Victorian age? It's a period in time in the English uh, history, and um, the the age is um, we're talking about the 19th century early 19th century until early uh, 20th century when uh, uh, queen victoria was the sitting monarch she was the sitting queen she was ruling and she has uh, she she uh, um she had been ruling for perhaps 60 or 70 years um she started early in the 19th century and was like 18 uh, 20 something and she died in 1901 so as you can see uh, this is a very long uh, period she started off as a very uh, nice and sweet young lady and she ended up uh, um, a grand uh, uh, mother having so many kids and uh, uh, stuff um, again because of the fact that she uh, stayed in an office for so long she has given uh, her name uh, to the age so the Victorian age uh, in terms of label refers uh, back to the time when Queen Victoria was governing England or Britain Great Britain um, and in terms of concepts when I say Victorian age lots of ideas uh, would uh, pop up and come to our mind I mean the idea of respectability the idea of morality uh, the uh, this was also the age of the Empire when uh, um, England was um, or Britain was a big empire that has so many colonies uh, um, in different parts of the world uh, especially in India they had colonies and India happened to be the biggest of those colonies and the most uh, the richest of them all you have colonies they had colonies in North America uh, they have uh, colonies in the Pacific they had colonies in, in, in Africa in Egypt and of course in India like I said uh, we're having the reason why we're stressing India because we we're going to have a whole novel uh, um, that uh, whose setting would be uh, between England uh, between London and, and, and India and that would show you how important India was uh, um, to the um, to the 
to the British in terms of wealth, in terms of you know trade, in terms of uh, you know material stuff. Uh, okay, so um, this is the Victorian age, and we're talking about the idea of home. And if we try to uh, uh, kind of unpack the idea of home and abroad, we will talk about when I, when I say home, I'm talking about uh, um, something as small as a house and uh, the qualities of this house in terms of what goes inside the house, uh, what roles every member of the family is playing uh, in the house and also uh, I'm talking about uh, con a country as being also home. So home has a literal meaning and it means a house and it has um, a more abstract meaning that would encompass uh, an entire nation and the associations of uh, of being uh, um, you know at home um, in the in the this biggest sense that I'm talking about I'm talking about home I'm talking about security and safety uh, I'm talking about uh, you know uh, being a, you know a, a big country for example that that I have people coming from all over the world and stuff like that. This is as far as home is concerned. And uh, like I said, there is uh, obviously more to uh, what I'm saying than just that. We'll, we'll talk in um, greater details when the time is right, inshallah. And then we move on to the word approved. And approved, as uh, the word uh, indicates, is about, you know, uh, leaving your country and, um, and going some. I mean outside the confines and the borders of your country and what it means are we talking about homesickness uh, are we talking about what is it uh, does it have a political aspect to it uh, um, yeah that's uh, true we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that again we're talking about that within uh, or against the background of uh, a big culture called Britain uh, we're not talking about home and abroad in 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 abstract senses, we're talking about them within the context of Britain in the 19th century. So it's home and abroad. This is a chapter, and this is a chapter. And then uh, at one point we'll talk about how uh, abroad uh, um, comes to home, which is obviously uh, a contradiction of terms. But this is uh, actually what happens. You're going. We'll 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 talk about home and see how abroad can be shown at home I mean this is obviously uh, uh, what is happening even now you don't have to travel to see the world you can uh, uh, I mean the world is a click away I mean you can simply use YouTube or the internet and know about what happens in the the USA uh, in Europe Africa so this is you're staying home but abroad comes to you and this is um, of course, they didn't have internet that at the time uh, in the Victorian age in the 19th century. They their internet would be uh, magazines and newspapers and uh, and literature, uh, whether we're talking about novels uh, um, or uh, poetry and uh, all, all all these kinds of things. So this is how abroad will come uh, home or come to home, as we're going to see. Uh, am I making sense so far? <clears throat> okay, good. Nice. Uh, okay. So, what would be the uh, what are the aims of this part? Uh, we're talking about a whole part, and a whole part would encompass and would include more than one chapter. So, uh, you're going to have different chapters, and they have aims. So uh, one uh, would be to develop uh, your uh, close reading skills by introducing you to prose fiction from a range of genres prevalent during the Victorian period. But this is one of the aims uh, to, uh, you know, uh, train you as how you can approach a text and you can read it closely. By, by close reading, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you um, check uh, a piece of writing a passage for example and you read it closely by exploring the ideas that it uh, it may have and then you kind of link the ideas to the rest of the novel if it's a novel what comes before and what comes after uh, 
uh, uh, this is of course um, a simplification of the process of close reading but will 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 do more than than that when the time is right so how do we uh, do close reading uh, uh, in novels like uh, Wuthering Heights and the sign of what we read them when we read them and we when we ask all the right questions when we analyze them this is close reading and then in exams you have a piece uh, um, uh, that is an extract that is taken from one of these novels and you highlight it and co comment on it and uh, this is not going to be possible unless you have read uh, the novel of course so uh, this is one of the aims so, so it's to develop your close reading skills by introducing you to prose fiction from a range of genres prevalent during the Victorian age so our focus is on the Victorian age and the Victorian age is uh, the period between uh, the 20s and the 90s of uh, the uh, 19th century it's a very long period that's why we have different uh, um, uh, pieces of work we have different genres and uh, let me ask you uh, about the word genre what, what, what do I mean by genre what's a genre give me a synonym a synonym is a word that has the same uh, or uh, almost the same meaning a category a section a type okay yeah no not style not style Sarah so it's a category or a kind when 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 for example I talk about literature and I say that literature is divided into a number of genres uh, we have novels as a genre we have plays as another we have poetry as a third so these are different genres even within uh, <coughs> uh, so this is within literature even within arts when when I talk about the arts the arts ha ha or art has different genres um, under art you have uh, what you have music you have uh, architecture you have uh, sculpture you uh, ha have what else so these are all genres under art okay um, sometimes uh, you have what we call cross generic texts it's um, a text that has more than uh, uh, one genre you can have a novel that has uh, uh, pieces of poetry in it uh, that has you know um, conversations and dialogues that are typical of plays in them so um, ah yeah more or less yes mm. uh, okay so uh, we're having um, a number of genres um, and one of them would be um, you know we have a novel uh, we have a full-fledged novel by by the name of Wuthering Heights uh, we have another novel but it is shorter uh, the sign of four like I said we have a novella uh, by the name of the the peach in Felissa by Stevenson uh, this is also a different genre and then we move on to uh, like I said we have uh, um, short stories by um, James Joyce and we have we finally have Brian Frail uh, giving us uh, a play a small play a memory play so as you can see you have uh, crossing generic experiences if you like crossing generic uh, learning if you like yeah okay good um, okay so what is what else are we uh, in for like I said uh, we're going to compare and contrast the representation of whom and approved in, in these writings how whom is presented and how uh, approved is also presenting uh, presented in these writings and finally we'll have uh, one of the aims of, uh, of this part would be to discover the importance of readers uh, uh, and reading in the Victorian uh, periods so we'll, we'll talk about readers uh, people like you and me who are literate they know how to read and write and the likelihood and the possibility that they uh, grab a book and read about their home and about uh, other countries is very high so we're going to uh, um, also discover the importance of reading uh, 
and readers in the Victorian period. Let's hop right in. Uh, this part is obviously uh, written by uh, um, Shafaqat Tawheed, who is a scholar, a very famous one. Uh, like I said, we'll, uh, this part is meant to provide and furnish some kind of background about the Victorian age so that uh, um, when we do the literary works themselves, uh, you can always uh, relate uh, the novel uh, uh, or the novels that you're dealing with uh, to the age and, 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 and this way they make more sense. So um, normally they say that uh, you know novels and other uh, literary works are normally uh, social and political documents. They reflect uh, the age uh, uh, that they were written in. And this is uh, very true of the novels that we have. Um, uh, like I said, the first novel would be Wuthering Heights, this heavy-handed novel by Emily Bronte. And uh, um, as we proceed, we'll have other um, lighter novels. Uh, okay, so uh, again, we're reading the, 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 uh, these uh, literary works against the background, uh, against ideas in, uh, at the time. Okay, what are the ideas that were uh, prevalent or widespread at the time uh, we had uh, uh, ideas of respectability ideas of c conservatism conservatism is uh, I mean the society is keeping to itself they have xenophobic attitudes they don't want people from outside they feel threatened if uh, people from outside uh, come they focus on uh, uh, the well-being of their country uh, we, we, we'll see uh, how this is reconciled with the fact that uh, at the time England or Britain was uh, a big empire uh, that has uh, colonies uh, um, in other countries. So how, co how come you're so conservative and so you're so keeping to yourself and you don't want other people to come over if uh, you yourself uh, as a country is invading the uh, the rest of the world but this is one of the contradictions that we will uh, have and this is one of the contradictions that we will sense with uh, British people I mean uh, they they like to keep to themselves but at the same time they have to go out and invade the world because of uh, I'm, I'm talking about private citizens, about individuals that, and who have to do that because of uh, the economic situation. Remember, we're talking about the Industrial Revolution at the time. And when the Industrial Revolution came, lots of jobs uh, were obliterated and were uh, um, uh, people stopped working in them because the machine was quicker and was more efficient and more effective. So uh, lots of uh, British people had nothing to do, so they had to uh, work uh, in the empire, their empire as, um, you know, uh, colony administrators, as soldiers, um, uh, um, and, and this is where home and abroad uh, um, and it come together as we're going to see. <coughs> uh, so as you read through uh, these works, you will notice how important the idea of home is to them. Absolutely. Um, and as uh, you have uh, seen in Pronte's novel, which is set on the Yorkshire uh, moors, we'll, we'll talk about uh, uh, if, if we're going to talk about Pronti, uh, Pronti and her novel, uh, which is Weathering Heights, we'll have to talk about the geography of England, where the uh, novel located or set. The novel is uh, set in Yorkshire uh, Moors, which is obviously uh, um, a, a countryside uh, area in the north, and then the north, uh, uh, unlike the north in other uh, places in the world. The, the, the north in England at the time was not that uh, educated, was not that, uh, you know, rich. So people in, 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 in the north didn't have enough access to education like people in the south and in London had. 
uh, okay so whether we're talking about the south or the north um, uh, people the people of England at the time were known for uh, their conservatism for their uh, uh, codes of morality they have uh, you know uh, different levels of respectability they want everybody to observe them otherwise you'll be uh, accused of being uh, improper uh, dealing uh, um, I, I mean uh, society w would frown on you to say the least you, they wouldn't accept you um, okay again uh, here uh, we're giving examples of what home means and what abroad means uh, okay uh, and the three uh, novels that we uh -huh. will have whether we're talking about weathering heights or the beach of felissa or the sign of four you have uh, this oscillation or movement between home and abroad uh, okay um, um, the movement as as i said is uh, more or less like a philosophical or a metaphorical journey uh, from uh, a level of awareness to another uh, if you look at weathering heights and see the uh, movement I mean you have a physical movement from one house to another because obviously we have two houses in the novel but we also have a movement that uh, 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 or a journey that the, the main ca character Heathcliff is going to undertake he's going to leave uh, the whole country behind or the whole town behind and go uh, um, uh, what seems to be abroad whether he moved to another town or uh, another country uh, and when he comes back he comes uh, rich uh, this is a movement whether uh, he is going to change whether he is going to acquire levels uh, of awareness uh, this is this remains to be seen as we're going to uh, to see and then we move if, if we move to uh, dials the sign of four we have the movement from uh, uh, you know from England to India and back and we'll see what happens um, uh, in in the middle the fact that we're going to uh, uh, have um, a murder case that um, you know the detective has to investigate and through uh, the investigations lots of uh, we we, we uh, uh, come out with lots of revelations lots of uh, revelations come out <coughs> and the idea of whom and approved and the ideas of whom and approved come uh, out too and then uh, uh, we'll uh, end this part with uh, the beach of Felisa where the um, the novel uh, starts and end on uh, a South Sea Island uh, uh, in the Pacific and uh, we see how um, a white uh, British trader uh, is moving there and deciding to stay there he's going to trade uh, uh, with the natives uh, he's going to get married to one of the natives so again this is approved right from the very beginning but he has his leanings and his uh, passion sometimes to uh, or for whom um, he'll be asking uh, questions I mean when he gets married for example to this uh, uh, native lady uh, he's going to have kids out uh, you know, from this kind of relationship and, and they happen to be daughters and he'll be asking questions about whether they're going to get married to British people or people uh, or natives and he has this kind of confusion which uh, brings us to the idea of home it is true that he is abroad but he has his affinities and his loyalties back uh, home um, am I making sense so far <coughs> uh, uh, am I moving quick or fast No, okay interesting okay good um, um, in five minutes uh, I'll finish something and then I'll allow you to go and pray for for ten minutes okay um, so stop me in five minutes so that you can we can all go and pray okay
good so um, let's go on again it's not only home and uh, approved and their associations that we're having in this introduction we also have the idea of uh, reading uh, and we'll talk about reading uh, and uh, Victorians as readers and why uh, uh, they uh, uh, they read oh, okay let, let, let's go and pray and then come back how about that okay I'll give you two ten minutes you guys have ten minutes go and pray I, is it is it uh, prayer time already in Riyadh and, and elsewhere okay go go and pray oh Rama is saying no okay go and pray uh, please so 10 minutes like I said We're doing the introduction, Yanur. Okay. Uh, don't ask me about page numbers. I'm doing the introduction.
Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Are you guys back? Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If you can all hear me, please type one. Okay. Uh, I'm hopeful that we're not missing anyone. Um. <coughs> okay. Okay. So um, before the uh, the prayer break, the ten minute prayer break, we were um, engaged in uh, talk about what uh, home means and what abroad means, because these are very important concepts, and knowing about them and getting to know what they mean will make all the difference while reading the uh, different novels that we have. Um, okay, let's go back to... Uh, okay. So the, the last point that I was making was more or less about the idea of reading and how literate uh, the English society uh, was in the Victorian age because of an act or a law that was made uh, an act that was made into a law allowing people uh, from uh, different uh, backgrounds to uh, to learn to read and write so you end up having people who are very literate and if you're literate um, you need to read and write and this is actually what happened So we'll, we'll start with the idea of whom, uh, at whom with the Victorians, and by now you know what the Victorians are, and uh, you have uh, some information about uh, the idea of whom. So um, what does um, whom mean to the Victorians? This is what this part is all about. Um, Okay, let me just, uh, I don't know why I'm opening this. Um, <coughs> okay. Uh, it's very strange because obviously, oh, okay, this is better. Okay. So at home uh, with the Victorians, um, let's first of all talk about the society and who um, mobilizes this society in terms of opinions and in terms of views. It's of course 
the uh, um, um, the intellectuals of uh, this kind of society, whether we're talking about philosophers, whether we're talking about social reformers and commentators, and in the Victorian age, um, uh, people, uh, like I said, they were all literate and they uh, they had access to uh, books and social and political tracts and treatises, um, and at the time you had. Uh, a number of social commentators like John Ruskin uh, uh, and you also have uh, poets like Coventry, Pathmore uh, and people, uh, social um, uh, or uh, personal development uh, uh, yani people like Isabel Peton and they all uh, um, have had this um, an agreement on the idea or on the importance of whom and they started to write um, you know books and treatise, treatises on the importance of whom and what whom means uh, uh, in the Victorian uh, sense uh, their ideas of course are inspired by what actually happens in society so they 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 uh, communicate ideas to the society and they also um, get ideas from uh, society this is uh, what we call um, uh, this is how this is what we call the dynamics of society I mean uh, philosophers and uh, um, uh, people in the media say things uh, and people uh, get affected by them and they also get affected by, uh, by the behavior of people and uh, reflect that and communicate that in their pieces of work so what was the dominant idea at the time the dominant idea was uh, uh, the uh, idea that home is all in all British home and Victorian home is everything uh, uh, um, it's, it's the place where um, uh, men uh, or uh, people especially men would go back to in order to seek uh, 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 safety and comfort and of course to keep uh, the manners okay so uh, according to these people John Ruskin Coventry Pathmore uh, and others they looked at um, Victorian homes as places where uh, like I said, there is uh, security and safety and also comfort and they believe that uh, if this is happening, if there is safety and comfort and uh, good food also, uh, it means that you are having uh, a righteous house or home, uh, a house uh, that is uh, uh, on the right path, uh, if you like. So uh, according to them, uh, um, a safe, uh, comfortable and right, uh, righteous home became the most important and desirable expression of British Victorian morality and middle class respectability. So if you want to pass off as respectable and as moral, uh, um, you have to have a household that has all these qualities and in order to secure and do that you would depend on the woman. So women were uh, seen as the um, um, as the individuals who can secure these privileges for men. They can make their houses safe. They can make them comfortable, and they can also uh, make them organized. If they can do that, uh, uh, they um, uh, these are all uh, all uh, signs of respectability. And morality in the Victorian age. Again, uh, uh, people like Ruskin and the others wrote uh, very famous uh, treatises and they did a number of uh, uh, lectures on just that. Uh, one of the things that uh, there is a, a book written by Ruskin called Sesame and Lilies in, in which he highlighted the idea of a proper and uh, the proper duties of men and women inside uh, the home so what is it that men are assigned to do within the house and what is it that women uh, are assigned to do with the focus uh, it seems on women the role that they play to the extent that they started to say that uh, um, 
women are more or less equated with the home they they, they um, the outside sphere is not their play uh, ground if they want to be uh, celebrated as uh, moral and as respectable they have to do uh, their duties within the house and one of those duties ironically enough would be to please their husbands uh, through uh, cooking and through cleaning up and all these kinds of things so for Ruskin the role of women was to be homemakers and helpmates to their husbands uh, who would return from work to be comforted within a loving domestic environment this is what is expected of uh, women nothing more and nothing less so the true nature of home according to Ruskin was uh, as uh, a place of peace the shelter not only from all injury but but from all terror doubt and division and this is uh, a quotation from one of his books so according to him and to others at the time women should devote themselves to the domestic sphere and make it their sacred duty so see how uh, uh, I mean they are equating the duty of women the 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 the, uh, uh, the, the duties that they assign to them within uh, the house and they are equating it with religion if you're doing what you're doing within the house and nothing else uh, it means that you're doing a good job uh, religiously speaking uh, um, he argues that their social role and this is obviously a reference to women was inseparable from their sex as women uh, uh, there is no separation between their gender as women and their duties at uh, um, at home I mean they cannot um, the society male dominated as it is uh, looks at women at the time from the perspective of home and house they are not seen uh, um, outside the house they are not given the opportunity to go out and mix with other people and have their own independent life uh, wherever a true wife comes uh, this home is always around her so again, Ruskin equated a well-managed, comfort, comfortable house with moral correctness. If your house is, as a woman, if your house is comfortable, if your house is organized, if your uh, husband is pleased with you, this is moral correctness, uh, to, uh, according to them. So an orderly home was the best expression of a virtuous society. So... Um, we have this house and that one this is run by this lady and that run by the other lady so uh, you have a collection of houses and those collection of houses make society and if uh, all the women in the different houses are doing what they are supposed to do in terms of nurturing in terms of cooking and pleasing their husband means that we have a virtuous society uh, another uh, I mean uh, a virtuous society and of course a, a, a virtuous country uh, this was uh, uh, what uh, Ruskin has to say and then we have uh, uh, the poet Coventry Patmore and he um, summed up the whole idea in uh, in a poem that he written and the poem uh, is uh, titled the angel in the house the angel of course is a reference to uh, women so if you are in the house if you are in the kitchen you are an angel but if you think of going outside those confines you are obviously demonized and you'll be more or less like a devil okay so the angel in the house is the um, you know is a, a long poem uh, 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 that would uh, promote the idea of women staying home and doing their uh, quote unquote uh, sacred duties in pleasing their husbands and cooking and organizing their houses okay so in uh, in this no uh, in this uh, uh, poem uh, he gave us the standard the standard Victorian womanhood in order for a woman 
a Victorian woman to pass off as pure and chaste. Uh, she has to be devoted to her husband, to her family, and she shouldn't be thinking of going out of their ho uh, her house. So what happens if she does otherwise? They, they will be accusing her of all uh, types of, you know, violation and, and, and transgression. Uh, and then we move on to another uh, uh, influential figure, uh, Isabella Peton. Uh, Isabella Peton used to write, you know, self-development uh, books, and one of them uh, was a manual that she uh, she wrote, and it, it happened to be and proved to be a bestseller at the time. Uh, uh, and it's um, a manual where she uh, teaches women how to manage their household by stressing uh, um, their duties and their duties like I said are you know obeying their husbands uh, cleaning and uh, organizing their houses and taking care of the kids other than that no um, because of the uh, the effect of these uh, ideas and how influential these ideas are, uh, Mrs. Beaton's book sold uh, more than two million copies uh, when it was first uh, published, um, and it was a household item. Uh, if if you're uh, uh, if you're a parent and you want uh, your uh, daughter to pass off as a respectable and moral individual in society you uh, perhaps buy her this book and you ask her to read it you read it uh, to her so that she knows how to uh, manage her ha household when she gets married uh, <clears throat> according to this lady and this is a quotation taken from her there is no more fruitful source of family discontent than a house uh, discontent, I'm sorry, discontent than a housewife's badly cooked dinner and untidy ways. As you can see, they are equating uh, respectability or the, the lack thereof, uh, the respectability of women and the lack thereof to uh, whether they are equating it with uh, a woman being uh, knowing how to uh, cook dinner and how to uh, tidy. Uh, uh, her house if if she falls short of this mark it means that she's not doing a good job and this is going to be uh, a source of discontent and I mean the whole family is not going to be happy about that and the entire society uh, by extension uh, so again uh, to be morally good uh, uh, um, women have to look no further than their houses and their kitchens. So as you can see, there is this focus on uh, domestic values. Let me check if you guys are asking questions. Okay. So um, am I making sense so far? Are you are you getting the ideas? Okay, good, nice. Okay. Um, and then we um, in in this part we have an example of a house which is typical a typical Victorian house uh, or home. It's at 18 Stafford Terrace. So this is, of course, a remnant of the Victorian age in London's uh, Kenston, uh, known today as Linley Sambourne. Sambourne House, Linley Sambourne's house is um, obviously uh, uh, is still uh, alive and kicking. And people go there every time they want to have a glimpse of what life was like in the Victorian age. Uh, this is a standard four-story Victorian uh, townhouse in a solidly respectable area. Um, again, uh, the owner of the house is Edward Lindley Samporn, uh, who, uh, who was a famous Victorian artist and illustrator. Uh, uh, the rooms are dist uh, distributed throughout the house on different floors so that uh, there is a separation between the private and the public. 
um, there is also uh, a great deal of uh, luxury in the house I mean you cannot for example compare it to a uh, rural uh, dove cottage um, in the house or the cottage that William Wordsworth used to live in it's uh, it's a different experience this is uh, as you can see you see how big the house is and you see how uh, I mean uh, it's big uh, for obvious reasons in order to separate what it, whatever is private from whatever is uh, public there is obviously uh, space for uh, to entertain uh, visitors uh, and uh, the rest of the house is for people who live in the house you see how full of uh, valuable items the house is but this is a typical Victorian house uh, like I said uh, uh, you wouldn't compare it to the cottages of the romantics um, so house or the house or the home was a source of security to uh, or for the Victorians they feel secure within the house and of course uh, um, women uh, play a major uh, part in, 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 in giving them this feeling of security and safety by uh, keeping the house organized and tidy uh, and everything uh, still um, uh, people would feel a little bit anxious um, and this is a contradiction so within the house you feel secure and once you step out of the house uh, perhaps to do the grocery or do anything you feel insecure and threatened and this is of course uh, typical because you're talking about a time when uh, Britain was uh, um, um, you know dominating the entire world through uh, the colonies there's so many colonies that it has or that it had around the world in India and in Egypt in Africa and in the Pacific so uh, you have this contradiction so within the house uh, uh, it's secure and safe and everything but once you step out <coughs> you get you feel th uh, threatened um, why because of uh, outside the house you have um, um, high levels of crime uh, and the rates of crimes are, are very high because of the, the fact that London and England in general is uh, um, the biggest in terms of population uh, is also the most appealing uh, economically and financially because you know it's the uh, capital of the uh, empire the British Empire so uh, it's only natural that you would see in the streets of London people from India uh, people from uh, from the different colonies so uh, you know British people are conservative and xenophobic uh, I mean they uh, they're not very uh, welcoming and very accommodating so once they step out of their houses and they see those uh, foreigners they feel threatened and they feel endangered but this is the contradiction that we have so home uh, uh, within the house is comfortable is uh, organized uh, we have a custodian a woman who makes sure that everything is in its proper place and this is a source of security and comfort for the male but once the male uh, uh, comes out of the house uh, and mixes with people in London he see uh, strange faces and strange colors for him of course I'm saying when I say strange colors it's uh, I'm talking from the perspective of a male uh, Victorian individual uh, um, <clears throat> so again uh, for all the comfort they may feel within the house then they, the ugly reality would uh, uh, pop out once they are out of the house again this ugly reality 
uh, has to do with uh, crime um, being uh, rampant, uh, having to do with uh, seeing uh, people uh, from other nationalities. Um, you know, you have doc workers, uh, Chinese dock workers, you have Indians, you have uh, p uh, people from Africa. But they, they didn't feel, uh, or, I mean, the British didn't feel that comfortable. Uh, okay, so this is as far as the idea of whom is concerned. We're moving now to the idea of approach and what approach means to the Victorian. And approach, of course, uh, unlike I said, has more or less to do with two things. One thing would be the British Empire, the fact that at the time uh, British uh, and uh, Britain uh, became uh, so big in terms of colonies, the fact that they have dominated the world. They had colonies uh, in f very far away uh, countries. Uh, so this is the approved part. You have um, British individuals moving to live uh, abroad for um, you know for obvious reasons um, they would go uh, there as managers and administrators and as soldiers so this is abroad um, they go there and sometimes they stay there for the rest of their life and sometimes they come back so this is a source of abroadness if you like in uh, in the Victorian age. Another source would be uh, books uh, and libraries. Remember we're talking about the Victorian age as uh, um, you know the most vibrant age when it comes to literacy. People were literate because of one of the acts that was uh, um, you know one of the laws that was passed by the Parliament um, it was in 1871 and through this um, act or law uh, people had access to uh, education and they were uh, literate uh, if you like I said literate means that you can read and write and if you can read and write but, um, like I said you uh, pick up uh, or you grab a magazine or a newspaper or uh, um, a novel or a poem and you read it um, and because of the fact that England and Britain at the time was uh, uh, like I said one of the the biggest empires in the uh, in, in entire history you have uh, people who travel to the colonies and uh, sometimes they come back and write books about what they have seen and what they have done over there uh, sometimes they send letters to their families and they talk about what they uh, what they do and what they see over there so uh, as you can see the end result would be that you have uh, people who are reading what uh, if you if you're sent approved for whatever mission so you send letters to your family or you are talented and you write books uh, or you or you're even a journalist who goes there in order to cover uh, incidents and events so uh, the re uh, yeah, people uh, uh, um, have a very uh, good idea about what happens abroad so abroad comes to them in terms of books uh, in terms of magazines in terms of news uh, paper coverages okay it's all because of the fact that uh, like never before England and Britain became uh, um, a big empire and by being a big empire you have people traveling from uh, Britain to uh, the colonies and then they sometimes come back and relate and they give stories and those stories are sometimes professional and they can fit into a newspaper article or they can simply be shared with uh, family members. Um, again, we're talking about signs and uh, uh, things that show you ha the impact of uh, of approved on 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 home. Um, 
uh, while walking in the streets of London at the time you I mean your eyes cannot miss um, uh, the signs of the uh, empire in terms of the goods that uh, people come back with from India and from other places uh, uh, the languages they sometimes even uh, um, you know hear foreigners speak their languages and even the Queen herself the Queen uh, herself Queen Victoria was affected by this uh, atmosphere of uh, approvedness if you like uh, where you know I mean you have a part any uh, you know, part of their palaces and houses had were furnished with um, you know Indian uh, furniture uh, Indian uh, very famous and very known <coughs> co uh, Indian carpets uh, she even had a servant uh, from India by the name of Hafiz or Hafiz Abdul Karim and uh, obviously he was one of her favorite servants uh, um <coughs> so this is if anything it shows you how uh, uh, the influence of foreigners uh, and the influence of the empire uh, was uh, on uh, the domestic life of the Victorians see this is uh, Abdi Karim this is half as Abdi Karim and this is Queen Victoria see so obviously he uh, occupied a very important uh, place in her uh, entourage as you can see can you see that? Oh, okay, wait, wait. Let me. Uh, I don't know what I did. I think I did something wrong. Okay. No, I'm not talking about the books. I'm talking about. I think I switched pages. Okay. So can you see now? Mm, okay, good. So as a, as I was saying, this is uh, Queen. What's her name? Queen uh, Victoria. And this is her Indian servant. If anything, it shows you the influence of um, the colonies on the colonizer, if you like, on the uh, empire. Okay. Again. So the Victorian period was one of imperial expansion the fact that uh, England or Britain um, expanded like it never did um, again you have this contradiction you ha have imperial expansion approved and outside and you have social upheavals upheavals inside social revolutions uh, people are not happy are not too happy about what is happening people are laid off they they don't have uh, jobs um, at one point so uh, because of the social upheavals uh, people are left with um, uh, you know um, little uh, choice the next thing you know is that they travel to the uh, colonies they work there and sometimes like I said they uh, settle there and never come back perhaps they get married like uh, Wiltshire in, in um, the beach of uh, in Felisa as you're going to see and sometimes they come back and they come and when they come back they come back uh, full of stories uh, that they share whether they share those stories on the professional uh, level by writing articles in newspapers and magazines or by sharing them with family members uh, again, if 
they would share them with uh, newspapers and magazines uh, people are going to read them uh, and they read them because uh, again the level of literacy was very high at the time all uh, not all of course um, you know 80 or 90 percent of the population were literate and they could read and write um, <clears throat> that's why uh, reading was uh, flourished at the time so sometimes the effects of a prod upon whom uh, were uh, plainly visible for example through the presence of people from the colonies visiting or residing in Britain uh, as the world's uh, largest city in the 19th century and capital of the biggest overseas uh, trading empire London was a cosmopolitan multiracial city where you can see freed African slaves uh, itinerant Indian peddlers, traders and students uh, Chinese dock workers and they all could be seen on London uh, streets and are described in vivid detail uh, by writers such as Doyle okay and then we move to a very important point which is uh, um, a prod being brought home through reading we said that reading was in full swing because of the uh, literacy act that was um, passed in uh, 1870 or 1871 and people uh, are obviously after they finish work they have no pastime but reading so that would create space for writers uh, writers would uh, of course uh, draw on local uh, material and local uh, um, stuff but they can also uh, draw on uh, whatever stories they hear from people coming from outside or sending letters from outside so as we uh, can see the Victorian age saw a great rise in reading and Britain became a literate society by the end of the 19th century so many Britons never traveled abroad but after the education act of 1870 almost all could read with some proficiency so what is it that they are going to read of course they are going to read local stuff and also uh, stuff written about the colonies uh, people are, are going to write about India and how big and beautiful it is uh, about, uh, I mean the, th the things that they have seen there and uh, uh, um, um, how different Indians are and uh, their stories and their um, you know their uh, different way of life and their different style of living and this happens to be very appealing to people because normally you people like to know about other cultures they find them interesting and they start to make all kinds of comparisons and this is this was catered for in the Victorian age and uh, um, reading was one of the uh, favorite pastimes uh, so while people uh, from the colonies of all uh, ethnic backgrounds were present in ports like London and Liverpool uh, uh, for most Britons understanding of abroad was mediated through the printed and written word okay so most of the material or most of uh, no, of their knowledge about abroad was given to them through the printed page remember uh, um, being able to read would require I mean if the whole society is able and is capable of reading but that would create opportunities for the establishment of newspapers and magazines um, and for people to come out uh, if they have the talent and, uh, and write novels and uh, articles and, and, and essays about abroad and we started to see uh, uh, new uh, you know publications and new newspapers like the illustrated London news uh, which was um, uh, this this uh, newspaper was 
uh, influential informing British public opinion about the empire. So newspaper reading was something that all literate people uh, uh, could participate in at a very uh, little uh, cost. And even Queen Victoria would uh, read and she would read newspapers and, and of course uh, normally people love their kings and their queens and they would mimic and imitate her if they know that she reads this or that newspaper uh, if they know that she is uh, uh, in into the act of reading they would uh, follow suit which is not a bad thing at all as you can see this is can you see this picture where you have a uh, queen victoria and somebody is reading for her can you see that if anything it shows you that she was uh, interested in reading uh, and what is it that she's going to uh, read she is going to read of course uh, um, about domestic stuff but she is as uh, as the empress of india as they used to call her and as uh, um, the queen of um, the British Empire she would uh, um, like to know about what happens in uh, uh, the colonies uh, too so Britain's most important imperial possession India was often romanticized for readers at home so you have novels like the uh, the novel that we're dealing with the sign of four where uh, aspects of india are being gl gl glorified and romanticized romanticized in the sense that they talk about india ah yeah like nabila is saying she also took uh, hindi and urdu lessons um <clears throat> So in the chapters that follow, we will be exploring how some of these certainties about home and approach changed during the Victorian period uh, by following uh, themes uh, through the chosen uh, texts. Um, uh, with this part, we have finished the introdu uh, introduction to the book. When we meet again, so what time when when are we meeting again i think we're meeting again on thursday right okay so what what i what do i want you to do for next time i would like you to read the introduction and not only the introduction the introduction and the chapter that follows can you do that can you promise to do that okay good let me uh, yeah we need to uh, create uh, a whatsapp group so that we can uh, if the LMS is not working and I would like to share with you updates or I would like to share yani anything I mean uh, calling for an extra class so if we have a whatsapp group it would be um, you know um, quicker so I, I, I need a volunteer I need somebody uh, to create a group and you may uh, want to add me to the group let me give you my number so this is my number zero five three four zero one seven I don't know what's happening did I forget my number zero five no, what's what's wrong I I got confused for no obvious reason. Uh, Sheikha has my number. Okay, so I would like you to uh, share your number so that whoever is going to uh, to create the group can have it. Yeah, please write your numbers.
I don't know what's wrong. Did I forget my number? It's very strange. Yeah. No, this is not mine. Yeah. I'm not going to leave until everybody gives her number uh, to the admin of the group. Okay. Don't worry. The class is recorded, so I have all the names. I can always go back. Uh, to the video and I can check attendance so you don't have to worry about that let me just move this way so that the camera can record the different names okay uh, Athir, Marwa, Sheikha, Maryam, Amal, Mahat, Arish, al Jibreen. Arsh, Arwa, Saud, Basma, El Ustaz, Hala, I don't know, uh, this is not a name obviously, El Ustaz, Hala, El Aouni, Iktimal, Layla, Kanan, Mayar, Mona, Nabila, Nivin Badr, Nermin, Nof Ahmed, Noor Al Mulki, Kamar, uh, Rama Haysam, Rawan Al Nuaimi, Razan. There has to be a family name, ya Razan, next time. Razan Al Law Name, the man, Rinad. Renat something. There has to be something after Renat. Ruqaya el fal fal falam. Sara el Hariri. Sheikh Sheikha el Shamari. Shuruk Abu Rayan. Tarfa el Zaid. Yara Adil. An Yazid Suad. Uh, Saud, I'm sorry. Yazid Saud Sadaqah. Yes. No, I um, I want only one group, Yagama. Don't uh, make so many groups. It's only one group. And don't uh, include me with other tutors. And this is the group that you are making is A to 13B. Okay, you shouldn't um, you know get us involved with other uh, courses okay is that clear so uh, on on this note and with this item we'll come to the end of the class I'll see you inshallah on, thurs on Thursday like I said you need to read the introduction and you also need to uh, prepare the new chapter okay thank you so much and it has been pleasant and it has been nice uh, meeting you this evening. Assalamu alaikum everyone.